Okay guys, today we're going to be talking a little bit about man in the middle attacks in order to get into our checksums and integrity checking for files tutorial. And that is the main focus of this video, but first I want to do a little brief overview of man in the middle attacks. Now why do we check checksums? Why do we need to check integrity? Why do we use encryption? Well, it's all to counter a man in the middle attack. And essentially, that's what the list is we're looking at right here. Various different types of man in the middle attacks that you could come in contact with. In fact, it is likely at some point in your life you will definitely face off with a man in the middle attack. It could be at a public Wi-Fi. It could be in your own home. If you gave out your Wi-Fi password to people you may not necessarily trust. In fact, I'll even tell you a short story. Recently, at a rental property, I discovered a hidden Raspberry Pi on the network. And this was actually not the owner's Raspberry Pi. And what this could be is a situation where a Raspberry Pi is hidden in order to perform permanent man-in-the-middle attacks. Now, what does a man-in-the-middle attack look like? Well, here's essentially what a man-in-the-middle attack is. You are the victim. There is your destination. Any website, say you're going to check your email. Say you're going to download the latest Linux image. In fact, I'm running Pop! OS right now, and this is part of my pop os tutorial series i want to introduce people to topics that are really important to them and things i think everyone should know about and that's what i'm starting with and of course it's always optional but i do suggest paying attention to this video if you're not familiar so let's take a look we have the attacker here and what they could be doing is a dns attack or an ARP poisoning attack and essentially their goal to make you believe they are one of the other parties from the gateway to the destination all depends what kind of attack they're pulling and what their goals are so you could go to if you're in a man in the middle attack you could go to a download site and at that point you could be clicking on a link as we see right here user requests website receives website and on that they have a download link well the it's the right website at the top but are you sure the download link is changed in mid transit that's something that can actually happen and does happen very real in fact we're going to be talking briefly about a story called Finn Fisher which was a situation where a user would request a website and at that point they would look to download a file but they would be redirected the link itself would be redirected to a malware download link and at that point if they hadn't checked the checksum they would not be able to verify the integrity of that file and they could be installing malware the goal in all malware is to install what's known as persistence now persistence is when malware is installed it actually remains persistent on the hardware it's not just a downloaded malware that runs for that moment and you reboot and it's gone persistence is where it's stuck on the system it's deep in the kernel maybe a kernel module may even go as bad as the bios itself which is why it's really important to keep your files encrypted but also to minimize access other individuals may have to your devices physically and virtually we are seeing an example real world example and they believe in this case an ISP may be involved now how did they determine that factor well they determined that it was likely an ISP level involvement the ISP itself or it could be someone inside that ISP so you have to keep in mind that these kinds of things actually do happen on a broad scale so even if you trust your local area network if someone in between you and your destination including your own ISP were to perform a man in the middle attack where they served a replacement file with malware which is the case here Finn Fisher was serving spyware where they were able to install spyware on computers and because it was a broad scale attack it was covering over two countries of users 
they believe it is and it is likely that it was involving the ISP at some level. So that is where this comes into play. That is why integrity checking is so vital and important. If you want to be sure that you're running the correct software, especially say you're downloading a Linux image or ISO image, you're going to want to make sure you check at least the checksum, if not more, in order to be sure you're not installing malware in that installation. Because once you've done that, you can't trust anything on that system again. So let's go ahead. Let's get right into it. We're going to start with command line. So if you have an SHA-1 checksum provided with a file download, to check the checksum, you'll do SHA-1 sum test 1. Okay, we have the checksum. This is the output. And what a checksum is, it's a cryptographic hash that essentially gives you the output. And if the contents of the file are identical, you will get the same exact checksum. And that's how you verify the integrity. So if someone were to replace the download link or the file itself on the server, say the server got hacked and it was a Linux provider. In fact, this happened one time with Linux Mint. In fact, I was a Linux Mint user at that time. Thankfully, I did not download the back door. But what you need to know is this could happen to anyone. Any download server can be compromised where that file can be replaced with a malware patched version. So now if I check SHA1 sum 2, test 2, it's going to be different. See how it's different? Very different. Now, if I were to replace test 2 with the same contents as test 1, I would actually get the same checksum. Now let's look at test two. Okay, as you can see, they now match. So let's go ahead and check the checksums once again. And test one. As you can see, now they match. So just a minute ago, we showed how one character difference completely changed the checksum. And when they're identical in contents, they match the checksum. Next, how to check your whole system for changes on packages you may have installed. Keep in mind we're working on Pop! OS, but you can use the following commands for any Debian-based system. Let's go ahead and look at Deb Sums. Man, which is manual Deb Sums. So it's going to open a manual for us so we can learn how to use it. So anytime you need to run a command and you want to learn more how to use it, you run man and then that command. So I'm going to show you a couple tricks and usage examples here. So this checks the five, the MD5 sums of installed packages, and MD5 is another checksum cryptographic hash algorithm that we're going to use to verify against the original installed package. Let's go ahead and use the example. So deb sums, and then when we do A, it's going to list every damn file we've installed. <laughs> That's way too much. That's hard to keep up with and it's also tough to get organized. So I'm going to show you a little trick. We're going to do deb sums. We're going to do the same command deb sums a and see how it says OK. That means that the files are fine. They're just like they should be. They're the same as from the Linux distribution. Now what we want to find is which ones are not fine, which ones have been modified, and that's where we're going to see failed on those examples. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do pipe, which is that symbol, then we're going to do grep, and then we're going to do fail. And when we do this, it's going to only show the files that have been modified, the ones that are different less work for you to check that so as you can see we have access immediately to only the ones that have been modified so it's a much shorter list as you can see it's only from here down to there and what you'll notice is a lot of this is configuration files now what you really want to look out for are if they are binary changes so if it's a binary executable something like a command that you would execute if you notice that is failed you're gonna really want to look closer at your system. Now in this case we have a Tor RC file. What's that? That's a Tor configuration file. I did modify that because I'm running a 
Tor hidden service website here. So of course it's going to be a failed checksum because it only is checking if it was modified from the original. And configuration files are always going to be modified from the original if you do any editing of them. So keep in mind that if you have configuration files come up, it's no big deal. And if you're not really sure how to tell what kind of file something is, you can simply use the command called file so let's go ahead and file test one and it tells you it's a text file so if you're looking to check just the binaries and look closer at that and I do suggest if you don't remember modifying any of the config files that come up go ahead and take a look at them you can use something like the less command to just see what may have been changed on them Let's say we need to check a package. Say there's something we need to trust. We want a command that can let us check the package and all its dependencies, meaning not only the file itself, not only all of its files, but also everything it relies on. So let's go ahead and take a look at a new command called rdebsums. All you have to do is type a command or something, a package that you use, and it'll check on it. All the checksums, make sure they match, make sure it's got the integrity, look for any malware changes on your original packages, and it'll tell you if anything's failed. So let's go ahead and check Tor with this. rdebsums and then Tor, because Tor needs to be reliable. We can't take any chances with Tor being modified. Uh, and it's one of our most important things to check on as a Tor Hidden Service server. But, as we notice, once again, it's quite a long list. So let's go ahead and do something else. The failed files, rdebsums, tor, then pipe, then grep, and then fail. Now it's only going to show the failed or the modified from the original and that way we can really narrow down our search. And that way, all we have to do now is see that, well, oh, one did fail, but what is that? That's actually our configuration file. I modified that myself. So that's the reason it says failed. So don't get alarmed by the word failed. Doesn't mean anything. You need to look into it on your own individually and see what it is that may have failed. And that's what you can do on the command line to check for checksums. Next, let's take a look quickly at a Nextcloud app. You can also check the checksums there, as you can see in this small animation here. At this point, you can then just type in the checksum you want to check. Say you're given the SHA 512, and we will check that checksum. And there we go. We can then compare it. Now, there's another application we can use on Linux, GTK Hash. This is another application you can use to check checksums. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this. So all we'd have to do at this point is select our file, and we would put in the correct checksum, and then it would check the actual checksum of the file, and it would tell you if it matches. I hope this has been helpful to you. Checking checksums and integrity using encryption, all extremely important topics. So I hope this was helpful to you. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I will be back later with more on how to protect your privacy and security.